You are probably going to play Last Epoch at some point in time, some way, somehow. Your friend is going to see it, they're going to want to play with you, it's a co-op game, it's fun as hell, it's an RPG, and I'm going to tell you every unique aspect of the game that every player that plays around 10 to 15 hours, so essentially everybody who buys the game and plays it for any amount of time, is going to interact with and is going to enjoy that you can't really find anywhere else. So. Let's get into it. First of all, there's as many skill trees in the game as there are skills, because each skill has its own skill tree. Within each of those trees are about four major archetypes of a skill, so four different ways that you can customize and play a skill, and those archetypes basically cover every way that a typical ARBG can scale damage or quality of life or anything like that. And further along into the game, when you're getting into the late game, there are legendary items that grant you more variations and archetypes for those skills specifically, or for overarching builds that you'll be tailoring to your life while you're playing the game and stuff. So there's a deep amount of customization when it comes to skills, but in an intuitive, uncomplicated fashion. And you level up these skills. If they're specialized, then over time, as you gain XP, your skills will also gain XP. Now, separate from skill points are passive points. Each class has a base passive tree. Uh, no matter what master you pick later, which is essentially a subclass, which are all interesting different kind of archetype classes for whichever base class you pick, no matter which master you pick, you will always have access to this base class passive tree. And then you'll have access to every first half of all three mastery passive trees. And then based off the mastery you pick, you have full access, access to that second half as well for the mastery passive tree that you end up choosing. Shown exactly by the chain link here, it shows you exactly where you'll be able to have access to something and where you won't have access to something based off of the mastery that you pick. The mastery that you pick, which again is your subclass essentially, you're going to pick this around level 15 to around level 17. It gives you a gigantic boost to your stats that's unique to that mastery class specifically that often tailors a specific playstyle. And each mastery class also gives you access to multiple skills. The later skills you only have access to if you, again, pick that mastery class. But all the earlier skills on the left side of that chain link fence, I guess you could call it, you have access to as long as you put enough passive points into that passive tree. Now, it may sound a little bit complicated. However, it's not it's honestly i might have just made it more complicated that's a lot of things in this game where same with the crafting system it's so intuitive and uncomplicated and easy to learn but hard to master kind of thing except it's like medium to master but like the real nuances of it are hard to master that's every system in this game I'm not gonna go over the crafting system, but it is unique when compared to every other ARPG or any RPG in general, honestly. If anyone tries to tell you about the crafting system, just say, hey, I'm just gonna interact with it. And after you interact with it for like five minutes, you'll completely understand it to a large degree. But then you'll also understand the nuances of it after interacting with it throughout the like base campaign of the game. Same thing with the skill trees, same thing with the passive points, same thing with the specialization, same things with the mastery. All of it is completely intuitive, uncomplicated, and also extremely satisfying to interact with. Now, the third unique system in the game isn't exactly unique, but it does a unique thing. Idols. They are exactly like charms in Diablo 2. Now, Diablo 2 charms you have in your base inventory and you stack up as many and in the far end game of Diablo 2, your entire inventory is full of charms and well, you have no room for loot in an ARPG. So idols fix this and add a flare onto it. There's a separate inventory within your inventory and there's a large inventory management puzzle solving Tetris kind of like aspect to it. It's really fun, satisfying, intuitive, and uncomplicated, just like every other system in the game. It also adds to the depth of that whole charm system that was in Diablo 2 by adding more class specific idols. So you have the base general idols that everyone can use, and then there's class specific idols that one of the five classes can use. And those ones offer hard to get stats or unique stats that you can't get anywhere else or unique 
unique interactions or mechanics. Once you have a few top tier idols, they're basically build enabling. Like the Void Knight Void Smite build, it requires idols. That is an incredibly powerful build. One of the most powerful in the game, but it's extremely hard to pull off because you need these pure RNG idols. Uh, the range that they can drop is really high and the range of things that they can drop is really wide. And then also the range of like the sizes and like it's all, it's a lot, it's a lot. But again, uncomplicated. <laughs> Last thing we're going to talk about are the blessings. Now these are the introduction to the end game and a large part of the end game of Last Epoch. You earn a blessing by beating a boss. In order to get to that boss, you have to complete a certain amount of levels beforehand. So you can think of it like complete 10 levels, gain access to a boss, you beat the boss, and then that boss offers you three blessings and you get to choose one, but the pool of blessings that it can choose from is larger than three. So you may not get the blessing you want, and so you do those 10 levels again, you beat the boss, and then you get another chance at you know getting the blessing that you want and some of these blessings are similar to idols that they give you extremely powerful hard to get or unique mechanics that you can't find anywhere else and they give it to your character for free and it doesn't cost an affix slot on your gear it doesn't cost any passive points it doesn't cost any skill points it's just there it's like a permanent buff you could say and there are blessings and there are greater blessings blessings offer the base variation of these buffs and the greater blessings offer a super souped up variation of these buffs and there are two separate types of blessings the first one is basically drop chance blessings where for example let's say you're playing void knight void knights love two-handed swords and so you go to the specific boss you do the 10 levels you beat the boss and then you try to roll for two-handed sword drop rate you can get really high drop rate so basically you can get like 50 percent more two-handed swords dropping on the ground which if you've played arpgs before you know how overpowered like drop chance drop rate quantity quality is rarity is when it comes to your loot and that system goes pretty deep as well but its interaction with the gear system in the game is something that i just want to touch on for a second some of these greater blessings are so powerful that they'll essentially max out a resistance so say you want the greater blessing for poison resistance. If your class doesn't have easy access to poison and you don't want to waste a suffix on a certain piece of gear on poison resistance and instead you want like flat health, just get the poison resistance greater blessing and then you're good to go basically. So you're gonna get rid of like most of the damage you take from that element. Greater blessings are generally worth two affixes on like high tier gear as well. So it's, it's just awesome. Like if you want, there's life leech, there's just like flat armor there's flat health flat mana like all all everything basic and then also some more complicated stuff it's just amazing it's one of the most rewarding end game systems that i've ever experienced uh in any rpg ever let alone arpgs because it just it's a whole nother thing that's separate from your experience gain, that's separate from your skills experience gain, that's separate from your gear, that's separate from your inventory, charms, idols in this case. It's just separate and it just adds to your character. And then it like the, <laughs> the amount of power you feel as you get those and then retroactively fit your gear and craft your gear into something that complements your blessings is like, it's it's amazing and you're doing all this before you hit like level 80 and it's intuitive and uncomplicated and satisfying just like every other system in the game it's pretty incredible honestly i keep saying that but it is just true so here's a bonus system that's unique and that is in other arpgs but not implemented in such an intuitive and uncomplicated fashion okay okay yeah you get it you get it okay the loot filter hold hold on hold on hold on it's as easy as going to it i want to hide all normal items and now i do it's that simple there's a bunch more but if you want to hide all normal items you can so they'll never show up unless you hold the hotkey or press the hotkey that turns off your loot filter momentarily and then you can just turn it back on same thing with magic items with rare items basically with like epic items and legendary items you can do anything you want you can hide two-handed swords you can only show bows if you're a bow build you can only show stabs if you love stabs you can make sure that all shields show up as green you can make sure that all 
like necrotic resistance items show up as teal. You can make all elemental resistance items show up as red, like whatever you want. And it all takes like three or four clicks. You don't have to know any coding. You don't need to know anything specific about the game. There are some general tips and tricks to min-maxing your loot filter to like streamline your experience so that you don't have to sift through every piece of gear in the game for all of the things that you want and everything like that but that's not what this video is for. While you're playing Last Epoch for the first time, you will be fighting enemies for about 75% of the time. You'll be looking at your passive and your skill tree about 15% of the time, and then you'll be crafting like 5% of the time, and then you'll just be reading a bunch of stuff and sifting through gear about the other 5% of the time. And that's probably what makes Last Epoch so special, is that the amount of time you actually spend interacting with your character is higher than every other RPG because all the systems are so streamlined and intuitive and easy to grasp, hard to master type stuff. So, except they're not even that hard to master. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it offers an amazing co-op experience. The campaign is good. The story is interesting. The different mechanics with the story is interesting. And then don't even get me started on how they're implementing trade leagues or solo self-found leagues. But that is for another video. This one is over.